Hey guys, what's up? This is the Sun and Tim show. I'm Tim. He's Sun. We are here to talk about soccer. We got a resident soccer expert here, Sun. He's just super excited to talk about things. I'm learning just like you guys, some of you guys. So we're pretty excited to talk about soccer right now. Mm -hmm. So um, like we talked about, obviously the new roster got introduced ahead of the Serbia friendly and the Olympics. Sun, I don't understand why Greg Berhalter brought in 12 MLS players. Like what the hell, what's going on? Look, look, this is okay. First of all, first of all, Tim, I want to say that we don't exactly know what Greg Berhalter's thinking. So we can only speculate. So, okay. so now let's talk about this really quick. Cause this is a blended camp. It's a blended camp with the U 23 uh, team, as well as MLS players uh, sprinkled into this camp. Now, the reason why that is, is because for the Olympics, the Olympics only allow U23 players to participate in the Olympics with the exception of three older players. So the question then would be, and you, you asked a, a great question, Tim, is why have 12 MLS players? Because the, the fact of the matter is, is that we have to see what these U23 players can do because we've got the Olympics coming up this summer. Well, if you ask me, I think the reason why he invited 12 MLS guys is because I think, again, we're only speculating here, but I think he's trying to cast like a wide net. Mm -hmm. I think he's trying to build like a, a large player pool for the U.S. men's national team because it's going to be a really busy year for the guys. I mean, not only are the guys playing on their club side, but we're talking Gold Cup, we're talking Olympics, yeah. we're talking World Cup qualifying. That's a lot of games packed into one year. And because of that, I feel that Greg Berhalter is trying to find as many guys as he can. The players. Yeah, he's just taking players right now. He's just right now saying, let me just gather up as many players as I can find and then start picking out the guys for the squad. So he wants to get a good look at all of these guys because you never know if there's an injury or if anything else pops up. You know, he's at least seen all of these guys come through camp because conventional thinking would say, you're inviting the U23 uh, Rod, the U23 team to this camp, but you really should have only invited, say, maybe four MLS players instead of 12. So yeah. the only so that's the only reason why I think that maybe he invited that many was so that he could just take a look at these guys uh, again to see whether or not uh, they're they're going to be part of the team going forward. That makes total sense. So let's kind of look over these players. I mean, I'm still figure I'm just still being introduced to them. But first off, you want to talk about goalie? I know we kind of talked about wanting Matt Turner in there, especially because David Ochoa got injured. Yes. Yes. I mean, when you look at this, when you look at this group, I think the, the guy that I think I would want to see first is Matt Turner. Um, I know he, and he is definitely one of the, the MLS guys, but uh, I can understand if you want to, tr if you want to see one of the U23 guys uh, in goal and that would be fair. But if you want like a guy who's probably, I think the most, uh, the guy that's going to win the friendly for you or help win the friendly for you at goal, I think it's Matt Turner. Um, if you, I mean, sure, we could try Matt Freeze in there. Uh, we could try one of the younger guys, and that's fine. We'll have to see how well, because we also have to understand that if Greg Berhalter wants to incorporate this possession style game, this identity to the U.S. men's national team, I think maybe Turner is probably the best guy. At least I think his his ball plays a little bit better than the other guys. Maybe he's the guy that uh, that maybe gets the start. Uh, yeah. You know, and that's that's that. I mean, I would have, yeah. gosh, I was really hoping to see Ochoa back there because I think Ochoa is the long-term answer for the U.S. men's national team going forward. I mean, I guess there's obviously Zach Steffen, but I mean, I guess down the road because, uh, yeah. you know, Ochoa is much younger. But um, overall, I mean, I would have liked to see him in there. And I think for the Olympics, I think that's who you're going to see is Ochoa. Okay. You're not going to see any of these other guys. Well, and I think that's a really great segue to Ford, son, about, you know, hey, especially the names that come to my mind, uh, Aaron Long and Walker Zimmerman, those oh. players don't fit the profile of a Burhalter's a possession style <laughs> offense, dude. It seems like even just as a very casual fan, 
Dude, all they're doing is when they get the ball, it's they get pressured and they freak and go back to the goalie or launch it, hoping for a prayer to get to somebody. Yeah. And I'm just like, who are these stiff dudes? Like, why are they even being considered? Yeah, dude, there's nothing more frustrating than to see one of those guys or I and you know, I'm actually thankful that Tim Reams not on this one because maybe he'd seen him already. He was at the other camp. But when you see them do this, like they're motioning <laughs> for the guy to just chuck the ball. This is this is like the universal sign for just launch it forward and get it away. And what what you see with these guys is unfortunately, yeah, you're right, Tim, their ball play just isn't good enough. So it's yeah. like what. So why did they get called into this camp? Like, I don't know. We've seen enough of these guys to know that they don't they don't fit the profile. Are for they going to play Bell a lot? system? Well, hopefully not in any meaningful <laughs> games. I mean, if you're talking about a friendly, so this is why I'm thinking, okay, it's a friendly against Serbia. Maybe they're like, let me get one last look. Kind of like in the Wales match when he brought back Anthony Robinson. Anthony Robinson, oh my gosh, look, many <laughs> soccer fans love him. But if you honestly want to see how the guy plays, if you would like, I'd love to break down his game, that game. Greg Burhalter saw enough pulled him at halftime yeah. and said, no more for you. And, you know, no unfortunately, more. no more for you. And unfortunately, I think guys like Walker Zimmerman, Aaron Long fit the same profile as Anthony Robinson. Look, they're great. They're great in 1v1 duels. They're, gr- they're a good stay-at-home defender. But are they the types of guys that are going to break lines? No. no. Are they the type of guys that are going to play that next pass or play the entry pass forward? No. They're not that guy. If you want a stay-at-home defender, they're your guys. But if we're looking to graduate and play uh, alongside and against the world's best players, we need players that are good and comfortable on the ball, Tim. Yeah, who can move the ball back and forth, sideline to sideline, back forward. Exactly. These guys are not the guys. So it's like, okay, well, no, okay, so fine. They're not the guys. So who's then, some, maybe some of the forwards that are more the guys? Defenders, you mean? Who are some defenders, of the defenders? Sure. Some of the guys that I would love to see, Brian Reynolds. Let's see Brian Reynolds up there. Let's see Sam Vines in there. Let's see Chris Gloucester. I'm not sold on Chris Gloucester yet, but at least he's got the potential. So let's see those guys. Hopefully, Burhalter gives them minutes in this next game. But yeah, as far as defensemen, defenders, those are the guys that I would like to see over a guy like Walker Zimmerman, over a guy like Aaron Long. Because I can tell you right now, as a soccer fan, sometimes, dude, it is frustrating to see when the ball gets played to a certain guy who cannot do the job out there. It's like, oh gosh, I I gotta tune in and watch this. It's terrible. So good yeah. thing we're not seeing this with the regular men's national team anymore. So that's good. Yes, yes. Regular men's senior men's national team is going to be is going to be pretty off the chain, Tim. Yeah. These guys, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, because let's face it, guys like Long, guys like Zimmerman, I, I don't think are going to make the senior men's team. So then, why are you bringing them aboard to begin with? You know, like you're going to have guys like you're going to have guys like Richards, Brooks, Miazga. Those guys are going to be the guys that are in the mix to be on the senior team. I'm not expecting Aaron Long or Walker Zimmerman to be on that senior team. Menza, right? Menza is the player I was we were talking about. uh, Miazga. Okay. Okay. So. So, yeah. So, I mean, these are these are some of the players that I think will be in the mix for that. Not not those guys, Tim. So it's like, are they even going to get? Any playing time in Serbia against Serbia? I hope, I hope not. I don't know, Tim. I'd rather see these. I'd rather see these younger guys play. Well, so. I mean, another player moving to midfielders that really is starting to get me excited is Andres um, Pereira. Is that right? Yes, Pereira. Uh, yes, from yeah, Pereira. From Pereira. Pereira. Sorry, Colombia. Yeah, and he signed that. You he signed that short one time transfer, so he's ours, and that's awesome. This twenty, I think, twenty years old is just really good, really good technique. Knows how to stabilize the ball when it comes his way. It doesn't ricochet off. He's very decisive moving downfield. He knows how to dribble. Just very well rounded young player. Yes, yes, very excited. I mean, he's he's this young guy from Orlando City. Plays for Orlando City, I should say. He signed the one-time transfer. He is ours now, Tim. We have him in the mix. He's a guy that might project to be on the senior men's team down the road. So these yeah. are the types of guys that we would love to see. 
Did we steal somebody from Colombia long term? You think there? Well, I mean, as far you mean as far as Perea goes, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, Perea is a guy that I think would have been in the mix to definitely be on Colombia's senior yeah. team as well. So, I mean, the fact that we were able to get him was questionable because Berhalter invited Perea to the December camp and he refused. But he came yeah. to this, but he invited him again. And soccer fans were like, why would you invite him again? He said no before, but you invite him again. And he says yes this time. So That's not awesome. only does he say yes, he's, he files transfer. So he's here. He's with us now and he's going to be in the mix. He's going to be a fun guy to see. I would love to see him. I would love to see Brian Ko. I would love to see Jackson Ewell. All under 23 players. Yeah. That's who I want to see. Um, you, and, and, you know, as far as the MLS guys, I'm glad that they brought in Sebastian Legette. He's a yeah. guy. He's nice. He's tidy on the ball. He's going to play the ball. He knows how to play the next pass. He's a good, solid midfielder with a great um, – with a, lots of experience and a good veteran presence – for the young guys. One player I'm just super excited to see, son, Christian Rodon. But whatever. <laughs> what, <laughs> just you kidding. Take that 19, what is it? 19 appearances, just complete joke. Like, why is why is all right, why is he and Hassani Dotson even on the team? Tell me. Like, I do not get it. I think it's pretty funny, though. I mean, Rodon is a pretty great third a third def- a third person on the team when he's, like, in the MLS kind of style, but he just completely yes. sucks in this kind of style when the competition ramps up. Dude, when he's – you ever put the spotlight on Christian Roldan? I dare any Sounders fans to watch any of his caps and tell me that he can actually play with some of the international's best players. He cannot. The fact is – is that he makes his money, like you said, Tim, being the third wheel because you got Rui Diaz and and Jordan Morris out there. It's easy being the third guy coming in. All right, let me me come in and let me help out and do what I can. Yeah, it's like, does that mean he deserves a call up to the camp? No, not at all. And he keeps coming (laughs) back, Tim. 19 caps already, far too many. We've got to let go of this guy. You know, Hassani Dotson, okay, you might want to say he's young. He's the under-23 guy. Also, look, I don't see it. It's a questionable call. Don't see it at all. What's wrong with having Jackson Ewell? What's wrong with Perea? What's wrong with Ko? Legit, your midfield is set now. You're fine. You're fine. You can go throw that midfield out and you can play. Why are we letting Hassani Dotson take up a roster space? Or why are we letting... Christian Christian rolled on. Why are we letting him take a roster space here? I mean, it's one of the, it goes back to the head scratching move of bringing twelve MLS players. Roll down's an MLS player. He doesn't need to be there. Of if you want to pick out four MLS players that you want to sprinkle into this U twenty three camp, it would probably be Matt Turner. It would probably be Tristan Blackman because Julian Araujo is hurt. Sebastian Legette. Chris Mueller, done. Or if you want to bring on Jordan Morris, fine. But that's it. That's it, Tim. Why are we bringing, why are we bringing on Walker Zimmerman, Aaron Long, and Christian Roldan? We're bringing on Paul Areola. Why are we doing this? Well, like, do we honestly... Well, my, my favorite, the- son, my favorite of all, Josie Altador. Oh, I mean, I feel no. like, <laughs> no. why can't he be like, why can't he... Oh my gosh! Why why can't he be like an older Michael Bradley or something that just just in his thirties just makes this impact? But I mean, he's I, I man. I just that pisses me off, man. Because just like you know, as an average soccer fan, he was so good several years ago, and he I remember us talking and just blabbing on about Josie and just how exciting he was, on, especially on the attack. You know, the only yes. thing I can think of maybe it's just for his experience, especially with an under 23 team can really just almost be a coach on the field. I, that's got, th- that's gotta be it Tim. He's got over a hundred caps with the U S men's national team. The mm-hmm. thinking is that, look, he's going to be the veteran presence in there. The problem, Tim, is that this guy hasn't been fit in two years. He's terrible. He scored one, I think, one goal in the MLS all season. Look, it was Jurgen Klinsmann when he left Landon Donovan off of the U.S. men's national team roster when he said, we got to stop rewarding guys for what they did five years ago. We need Mm -hmm. to find guys now. 
and Josie, I love Josie. I own uh, like a handful of his yeah, jerseys. Yeah, from back in the day, man, when he was like just coming out like 12 years ago. The fact <laughs> is, is that he's not the same guy. It's like yeah. he doesn't even care about, it's like he doesn't really care about soccer anymore. He just plays with this lack of passion. And in the mm. game of soccer, I mean, he's, I mean, you need you need that. You need to be fit. That's He's sad not fit because he was so good. Like I could have easily seen him still at this age making some sort of impact. Yeah, yeah. And what you get he is that talent. Yeah, what you get is the fact that. I mean, he, he's a, like I said, he's like a guy who probably doesn't even look like he wants to play anymore. Now, yeah. I will say that Burhalter did bring in, like I mentioned, Chris Mueller had a great camp in December. He brought in um, Jordan Morris. That's fine, too. Jordan Morris, by the way, finally open to playing uh, overseas. If you, if you don't know the story of Jordan Morris, the urban legend of Jordan Morris is that he wanted to stay in MLS because of a dog. Because he like got no. a new dog and he, did, and he didn't want to leave to go play in Europe. So make what you want of that, Tim. Make what you want of that. But the fact is, is that when I you did look, not know that. That's mental. Yeah, so so when, you look, when you look at the forwards, like Jordan Morris, I mean, yeah, again, you could say Jordan Morris, you could say Jackson, you could, I'm sorry, not Jackson Mule, uh, Chris Mueller. Um, but if you look at the U23 group, there's, there is one name that sticks out there, and that's Daryl DK. Daryl mm. DK, to me, looks like a young Josie who's got technique, who's got creativity in the final mm. third. DK is a guy who we might want to take a really good look at and spotlight in this game. So hopefully he gets minutes. These other guys, this uh, Ebobise and Georgi Mihailovic, Again, look, maybe maybe Burhalter is looking for guys to fill up the roster, but I hope that those guys don't get the playing time. I shouldn't say I hope they don't get the playing time, but I want to see like DK get the playing time. That's yeah. who I want to see more than Mah- more than Georgie on the field. So so to spotlight a, a forward that I do want to see against Serbia is DK. So let's nice. cross our fingers and hope DK gets some playing time. Well, is there any last thoughts you have on this team before we kind of move into this matchup of Serbia? Um, you know, it, this was a very questionable uh, roster, uh, I would say, from top to bottom. I didn't understand a lot of the moves. A lot of these guys don't really fit the profile of what Greg Berhalter wants to run. Maybe yeah. he thinks that. Oh, maybe he thinks that bringing them into January, that maybe by the time summertime rolls out, they would have had enough time in the U.S. men's camps that they get a better grasp, understanding of what of Greg Berhalter's identity and system. That's yeah. the only thing I could think of because when I look at this, when I look at this roster, Tim, I mean, I, it doesn't really inspire any confidence in me to say that. This looks like this looks like the squad that Bruce Arena would take to the World Cup. Like this is what we would have if we had him. Uh, you know, I I mean, this is yeah. I mean, I don't know what to say, Tim. Other than that, it's 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 a very it's it's a head scratching it's a head scratching roster to say. Does the that least. inspire confidence when he actually picks players for the senior team, or is this like a separate thing? Yeah, I think we have to understand that this is a separate thing, and we have to understand that it's January. We've got Gold Cup. We've got, we've got, um, we've got gold cup. We've got Olympics. We've got world cup qualifying. It's a long year. There's a lot of games. I think he just, maybe he just wanted to get another look at some of these guys before he decided to, before he decided to say no more, before he decided to not bring him again, which I, I could see. I mean, maybe he wants to bring Christian Roll Don Tim to, to maybe just sort of uh, confirm what he's already believed. So that's, so that's what I got. <laughs>